Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Strike the Blood, episode 21. Um, and, uh, this episode starts off with Kojo arriving where Saki's body is. Um, and he's clearly... This, it clearly hits him pretty hard. He starts to blame himself for what happened, and he starts to lose control of his power and everything. And even, he, he even injures Imiragi. Um, and destroys that Sayaka familiar, um, or Shikigami, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but when when Himuragi mentions that like, he can't lose control of his power, or also destroy the island, and he'll take out Nagisa and all the other people he cares about that are still on the island, he manages to calm down. Um, and once he does come calm down, Ko, Ko he shows up, I'm Atsuka Ko. All right, and he starts to taunt Kojo about Asagi. And Kojo gets pissed, and he starts to attack him, all right? And Ko try, was going to try and hit him with, like, silver, metal, whatever, blah, 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 okay? And he, <laughs> Himuragi showed up out of nowhere and hit him across the face with resonant thunder. That was awesome. Um, what came after it wasn't awesome, because what Kojo did, he punched Ko through a wall, and Ko started to morph. And he used mercury on Ko, and it looked like Ko was destroyed because that stone that was in his chest was lying on the ground broken. Um, but no, he's not. He's not dead. We learned that. I I didn't think he was dead because it's it was just way too easy. Uh, but we get a confirmation later on in the episode that he's really not dead. Uh, but the reason I'm saying it wasn't that good was because right right after this, Asagi wakes up, and Kojo realizes like she, oh my God, she's alive. His reaction was incredibly stupid. He's just like, he was just... He earlier hit him so hard, but then as soon as he realizes that she's alive, he's just like, oh, she's alive. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> no. I I wanted some, like... I wanted him to, like, raise some flags with the saga. I wanted, like, some actual development between those two. It's been a while. Oh, I mean... Not really, because they kind of had last... Oh, I mean... No, it's it's been it's they need more. Okay, I wanted more development. I wanted something like Kojo when he realizes that Sagi is alive. He actually like he's so happy that he runs over to her and hugs her, which would make her embarrassed. And Himuragi would be about to say something, but then she wouldn't because she realizes how much Asagi means to him, and he's just incredibly happy that she's alive. And Asagi would kind of just like. She would, uh, she would just kind of let him do it too, and she, she, as a matter of fact, she would like the moment too. Um, but like, you know, I was, I was hoping for something, like, some, <laughs> something, not just him laughing it off. I'm like, oh, <laughs> she's alive. <laughs> like, I, I wanted something more than that. I, the way they did it was stupid. Um, yeah, it, yeah, and even after that, they're just walking down the street like nothing happened. I mean, Kocha wanted to get. Uh, Saki checked out by Mimori, but, I mean, other than that, they just were acting like nothing, <laughs> nothing had happened, like, I'm like, come on, she, she almost died, you thought she was dead, like, at least act like, so, at least act like something big just happened, I mean, come on. <laughs> whatever, um, yeah, they wanted to go to Mimori's lab, get her, get Asagi checked out, uh, but she still had blood all over her, and she was looking a, like a mess, so they, she didn't want to go on the a train looking like that. So they stopped by Kojo's house. Himuragi didn't. Himuragi uh, was separated from them there. Uh, they went to Kojo's house. Nagisa left to go get milk. Um, As Asagi went to go take a shower, but she gets taken over by Nina Adelard, and, she, and you can see the part of the hardcore uh, is embedded in her chest. And she walks out in front of Kojo naked, which was which was actually pretty funny. Um, and once Kojo starts to have one of his vampiric reactions, and she realizes, like, oh, I should probably do something. She uses alchemy on the plants in the vase in order to make silk and cover herself up. I mean, not really. I mean, she's not 100% covered up, but I guess it's better than, well, not better, because as a guy, I'm sure, like, most guys probably wouldn't prefer her to be covered up, but whatever. Um, the point is that she kind of covers herself up. Not completely, but uh, more so than she was before, at least. Her hair, more than just her hair. Um, and she starts to talk to Kojo. 
she mentions how the hardcore is pretty much her body and it's used to control the wise men's blood which is like her soul and her body the hardcore was contaminated by the dummy core and she can tell that Ko is still alive because the the dummy core is still moving the wise men's blood is still moving so that acts as proof that Ko is still alive how I don't know, but who really cares? I'll, I'll just accept it. What, <laughs> whatever. It's 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 strike the blood logic. All right. It's it's the alchemist's return logic. That's what it is. It's the logic of this arc. Okay, whatever. All right. Just, okay, Alex. I'll, I'll just accept it. All right, whatever. Um. Yeah. Cause speaking of Ko, he ends up getting captured by Natsuki. Um. Apparently, Lafolia wanted her to capture him since he's after Canon and all. Um, he also, he says that Canon is viewed by other people as a hindrance, and he also says that he wants to finish, he, he says it's unfair for her to survive, and he says he wants to finish what he started five years ago. So, we'll learn more about that later, uh, I'm assuming, <laughs> but, yeah, he ends up taking himself out, he punches himself and breaks the, the dummy core in his chest. Uh, and he's legit finished off by uh, Astarte. He's just another cutoff. There are a bunch of different like code clones out there, just like, just like how Nina can cut herself off into like small pieces of the hardcore and just like take over Asagi's body. He can do the same with the dummy core. So he has a bunch of like dummy bodies out there, and this was one of them. So he just kind of took himself out, and Astarte finished the job. Now. Back to the conversation that Nina and Kojo were having. I thought this was funny because she started like leaning in towards him. And he was <laughs> and like I thought for sure that when she started to do that, it was at that moment that Nagisu was gonna come back. But no, they actually didn't do that. They actually didn't do it. It caught me off guard. They actually waited <laughs> until she got some clothes on. Then Nagisa came back with Himiragi too. Which like, <laughs> which which made me really think like, wow, if Imiraki was gonna show up too, that man, that real that means it really should have they really should have come in when, uh, before uh Nina actually put some clothes on Asagi, but they didn't do it, so that that was it was a good change in the pace, um, but yeah, um, after that, oh, they were having they had this conversation. Nothing really comes out of it except for the fact that Nina knows Canon. But other than that, there's nothing really to take out of it. It's just a conversation, really. Uh, then we see this short scene of Ko. He's talking to a staff. Or he's talking to his staff about the dummy core maturing, and he mentions a promise that the two of them made. Um, it's like, I guess he's talking to the wise man? I, I, I guess. I guess the wise man is like sealed inside the staff, which kind of makes sense, considering what happens later on in the episode. Uh, but, I don't know, it's just a guess. Um, the next morning, Nagisa and Himuragi, they leave for the training camp. Um, there was this brief scene of Asagi regaining control over her body while she was laying in Kojo's bed. And there was a little bit of comedy there. Uh, but Nina ended up taking over again, like, right after that. So it made me, th like, what was the point in having Asagi take over there? Like, what... Was it filler? Was it just to have a little bit of comedy with Asagi waking up in Kojo's bed and misunderstanding the situation? Like, what what was the point of having Asagi take over? There really is none. But whatever. Just comedy, I guess. Kind of like comedy, comedic filler, really. Um, but yeah, Nina takes over. We, saw, we see Yase. He's communicating with Blue Leader. And he, and when he makes contact, he says, this is Heimdall. Uh, so I guess that's like a code name he has, um, and we see the director come out of the sewers, the guy from the last episode who Ko betrayed and he turned into like that thing, like <laughs> this thing, he like comes out of the sewers, right, and he's like just rampaging pretty much. Yaze's crew tried to freeze him, but Ko showed up uh, and those, and kind of like messed everything up. So these guys, they start shooting at the director, but that's just what Ko wants, because he can use the bullets as a catalyst for alchemy. And that's when he forces his staff inside of the director, which is what makes me think that the director, or the, the wise man was inside of the staff, I guess. Like, he, 
the, the, the I guess the staff was just inha inhabited by the wise man, I guess. Um, Kojo and Nina end up showing up, and the place is like destroyed because a bunch of charged particle beams were shot everywhere. Okay, and she and Nina starts talking about how the wise man was awakened because of what Ko did, and she says that the wise man is the goal of alchemy, uh, the man made godlike existence who wishes for the destruction of all. We got a little glimpse of what the wise man was last episode in terms of like explanation like the goals of alchemy stuff like that we already got a little bit of this before um but yeah the episode ends with a short scene of the the girls on their way to the training camp uh they're playing go fish or some kind of card game it, it doesn't really matter nothing in this scene really matters except for the ending where this thing is approaching them uh, and, and to be honest, there's only really three things it could possibly be. It's either the director, some who somehow made it all the way over there in that short period of time. It's either Ko or one of his cutoffs, which I also doubt. Um, or it's the wise man going after Canon, which is a, is what I'm leading towards. Since the wise man is some man made like godlike existence, it wouldn't surprise me that it can. It can cover long distances in a short period of time. Uh, so that's what I'm leaning towards. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the episode. Next, in the preview for the next week, it seemed like uh, Kojo was going to die. Like, you, you hear Himiragi saying, like, oh, senpai, I, I th weren't you supposed to be immortal? Like, how could you do Like, how could you do this? Like, blah, blah, blah. So it makes it seem like Kojo, something's going to happen to Kojo. But, like... When has there been an episode where something hasn't happened to Kojo? Like, seriously. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the episode. And overall, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Because we learned some information, but I mean, half of it was stuff we already knew. I mean, the main gist of the episode was the wise man getting brought back and Nina Adelard taking over Asagi. That was pretty much it, like... I mean, those aren't exactly small things, but still, I mean, that's it's pretty much it. So I'll give this episode a 7 out of 10, and that's it. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.